Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to take a close look at Scorpion. I've had a little bit of time this month to play around with this guy. I personally really like him. I think he's going to be a solid addition to the contest. And before we get straight into that gameplay, I do just have a couple bullet points I want to go over. First of all, I am in the CCP, so this is important to know it's not on the live server. This is all on the testing server. Second, the community has really spoken out. They want us to be mentioning that all the champs moving forward are going to be subject to the rebalancing program. So I'm just letting you know now that indeed he is subject to get rebalanced over the next six months. I personally don't see anything about him that looks overpowered in a way that it needs to be tuned down. So I think that's a good sign, but I don't have any insider information about that. I do have an, um, an abilities video where I go over the spotlight. So if you wanna look into that a little bit more and don't wanna read it yourself, I'm gonna link the card. Now, the main thing about him, he seems like a really tanky champion in the science class that has immunities and has a versatile way of doing red damage. The main thing is that he can have two immunities and you can choose which two between poison, rupture, and shock. And then additionally, you can choose your damage source between Rupture, Poison, and Shock. This is great for getting around stuff like energy resistance, physical resistance, poison immunity, shock immunity, things like that. And the cool thing about it is it's not really about the damage over time. You do stack debuffs, but they don't tick for that much. It's mostly about the sting damage. Now, it is not a power sting. Think of it more like an instant burst of poison damage or shock damage or rupture damage. Kind of like how Null has the instant bleeds. It's like that. It's like an instant debuff. You can trigger these when the opponent launches a special, when you throw a special too, or when your Scorpion's sense give you, uh, gives you like an evade. It's kind of like a little safety net. They will get burst right then as well. I want to talk about his base stats real quickly because on defense, these stats are actually pretty insane. His block proficiency, as you can see here, is higher than Captain America Infinity Wars, so he can get perfect parries in some scenarios, which is pretty insane. That's amazing utility unto itself. Additionally, they gave him pretty high armor. They gave him a little bit of physical resistance and energy resistance, which most champs just have zero in those categories. So that is just something that makes him a little bit more tanky. And then lastly, the one thing that I did not get into the showcase is the special three. It has a stun associated with it, and what you're supposed to do is charge your heavy to get a bunch of torments. The issue is the spacing after the special three. You're very far away from the opponent, so when you, you have to basically dash in and then start charging. And in just about every scenario, you know, it lined up sometimes, but for the most part, I found it wasn't very efficient to waste those three bars of power when I could be building torments in other ways with the special one and special two. So check out other youtubers if you want to see the special three rotation we're not going to do that today it might make sense if you run recoil but again we're just going to get straight into this gameplay looking at the special one special two rotation and with that let's move forward okay so these first two fights we're going to really take an in-depth look at his rotation so I want you to pay attention to what happens on the heavy attack what happens on the special one and what happens on the special two He's a champion that takes a lot of practice to feel comfortable with because one of the more important things that you can do to maximize your damage is to charge your heavy, have them dash into you, and cancel the heavy into a special attack. And getting that to work is a little bit harder than I thought it would be. And what I found you need to do is make sure that you have basically like the whole arena. Like you have to get them to back up to their corner and you in their corner just so that you can react in time, at least for someone with my reflexes. So we're seeing me do that now. I'm waiting for him to back up, charge heavy, 
he runs into us, we cancel into the special one. I found that like 95% of the time that worked. And the reason you do that is you see it put 14 torments on him. And these torments are going to mean all of the poisons that I put on him are going to last much longer based on how many torments. And then that means that the more poisons, the more sting damage. So that right here, we do the same thing. We get an eight torment bonus on that sting and it really does a decent burst of damage. So that's essentially the rotation. We're gonna see it again in the next fight as well. Notice that the special two also adds a 40% petrify. We've got so many debuffs on him so that every time he throws a special, he's just gonna sting himself to death with those poisons. And we can see it did not take that many hits to get him down. It was like 40 something. And then additionally, almost all the damage was poison, 64%. But you know, the poisons themselves are not ticking for that much damage over time. It's all about that burst damage. Now here's an Act 7 lane. I'm bringing in the Venom Synergy, which also works with Agent Venom. And Craven just gives me a little bit of perfect block chance. It doesn't do too much, just makes my stuns last a little bit longer. And we're gonna do the same thing. Start with a heavy, just get a couple torments on. And then this node has heal or hide, which means that they can get a regen, but I cannot benefit from the regen. And additionally, it has unblockable, like the uh, vigorous assault node. So now what is important to know is that he also has a sig ability where he can block unblockable specials if he has a taunt on him so i did have that as a safety net though i didn't have to use it you get the taunt off of the special one so now we're at this point where we charge the heavy we let her charge toward us and boom we add a bunch of torments that way now build up to the special two i found it's better to just do full combos because you really want to get to that special two while you still have a lot of damage over time on them you really need to make sure that they don't have any power when you go for the special two so there we go i have two bars i want to create that space there we go and then release this one's going to do a ton of damage because we get the bonus factor from all those torments that we were able to charge. We get the petrify, so that's gonna be reversing her healing. And at this point, she's pretty much down, um, which is pretty impressive considering how much health is in Act 7. Um, and also just notice that, you know, when we're parrying, we're getting these perfect parries, and she stings herself to death. So. I don't know, I think this is pretty cool. It kind of feels a little bit like if Spider-Ham was like a tank that also had immunities. We get that same ratio of about 64% of the damage was from poisons, which I really, really like to see that. Now we're gonna look at the utility a little bit. On this fight, I was just going around Act 7 looking for lanes that I think he could do. And I looked here and I saw, oh, it's selective time stream as well as shock vulnerability. So I'm like, well, here's a champion who can have shock up the entire fight. So we do the shocks thing activated. That's how you do the pre-fight. And yeah, I'm gonna have shock up the whole time. So selective time stream is not gonna be an issue. And now the funny thing about this fight is that it does have oscillate, which manipulates the AI. So him being aggressive at the start is actually really gonna help me. And then you're going to see when he goes into his armor phase, I'm going to get something really funny is going to happen. So um, I'm not going to give it away, but basically we have the shocks up They're They're not really doing anything. I'm going to try to do the spacing thing. I don't feel comfortable yet. This is the this is the dance you have to do. There we go. I got the spacing right now. He's in his armor phase. I just waited for him to charge and boom look at all those torments now this means all of these shocks that i'm going to be applying right now are going to last a super super long time so it's going to be really easy to get a bunch of these up as we build up to our special two because he's aggressive we're just doing these short range parries and then now we get to the special two and i think what i'm going to do is i'm waiting for him to come toward me we're going to parry uh let's see how do i get out of this what i want to do is get the special two off um, so I think I just do it here we charge it a little bit and then we throw it and boom <laughs> that's the end of him now it did have shock vulnerability which means that my shocks were doing more damage just remember that's part of the way act 7 works it's like if you do this thing you get a major benefit 
Um, but there, I didn't feel comfortable intercepting with a special. So if you notice, I parried, I charged heavy for just like two seconds and then released it into the special two. You still get a really nice benefit from that burst damage. So now I'm thinking, all right, I got my footage for the shock fight and I was like, oh, there's this mojo here. And I was thinking like, ah, there's no way I'm gonna be able to solo mojo. Mojo's a total pain. Um, I remember this mojo from, this is like the, uh, the Kang chapter of 7.3. I remember fighting this guy dying a ton because I didn't have human torch, but I was like, you know what? Let's just see what happens. So we start the same way. Uh, we have charge a heavy attack, so I'm trying to stay out of any life field. We're doing these short range parries, which is very helpful because the AI is being aggressive. And then he's gonna go into his armor mode after throwing a special, no problem. We got anti life field. So now I'm pretty much where I wanna be. I'm just gonna keep charging my heavy dude because he is not dashing toward me. But I know as soon as that icon from Oscillate changes or slightly before, he's gonna run at me. We got a little bit of help from the scorpion sense there. We got an auto evade, which helped me cancel. And I've never seen this many torments in my life um, until this moment. So now we've got these very, very long debuffs. They're never gonna go away in this fight. And what I wanna do is the same thing. I wanna build to my special two. Just notice how little damage we have taken. Now it's helped a little bit that we've gotten good prompts, but right here, boom, huge burst of sting damage. We didn't even have to intercept with our special two. We just parried, we heavied for two seconds and then canceled it into the special. Got a nice bonus from the torments. And yeah, that this is why I'm liking Scorpion. It's like on his base, if you play well, you're going to you know have the immunities, you're gonna have the tankiness, you're gonna have some red damage. But if you really know what's going on and you really know how to play him, it's going to go really well. So here I wanted to showcase on a couple things. Safeguard, which means, you know, is kind of a pain. It means you only get 1% damage per hit maximum. There's some annoying paradox stuff here. So he starts off debuff immune. He is aggressive EI. Look at, look at these parries, man. I'm getting perfect parries because of the block proficiency. What we need to do is build up our combo to get the paradox so that the debuff immunity goes away. Um, but yeah, again, taking barely any block damage on this champion who is one of the most annoying to block. So once we get to 15 combo, the debuff immunity goes away. And again, we do the thing where we charge the special one that worked pretty well. Uh, now we're just gonna build up in this type of fight, I'm not as focused on getting the perfect damage rotation. I'm mostly trying to just sort of keep this fight in order. Um, you know, what I, I think I want to try to build to a special two now, but yeah, we're going to see that, you know, because of all of these debuffs on him, the stings are going to do a lot. Right there, I do the same technique. I charge the heavy for just a little bit. Instead of trying to intercept with the special two, you can just do it that way, get a nice burst off of the special two. Now, part of this paradox node, we do need to intercept a little bit because that is the way to reduce the paradox. So just trying to land a couple intercepts here and there to make sure we don't get to 12 paradox. But things are going pretty well. I mean, we're still taking a little bit of block damage, but way less than some other champions would. We got a nice intercept there. So now I'm, I'm kind of building up to do another burst of damage now that we've sort of got the Paradox back under control. Um, again, we got a little bit of sting damage, not as much as the last time. Now we're gonna try to do our heavy charge right there. The spacing is looking good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting pretty used to this technique of having them dash back to their corner first. I think that's pretty important if you're going to do that move. And now we have these torments. We're trying to build up the poisons again. Um, things are going pretty well. We're, we're definitely winning uh, the HP battle. And now I think I wanna try to do a big burst. So we're gonna try to parry again, charge straight into the special two. I did not connect it. So this is a little bit what I'm talking about with the um, skill-based play. Now right here, look at my health bar. My health bar was going up because we are blocking his healing. My SIG ability is allowing me to siphon, to health steal some of that, okay? Now my paradox just broke down, which is why I took that big burst of damage and now he's gonna be debuff immune again. So that was really unfortunate. I almost made it to the end with like a perfect run, but you know, paradox can be pretty annoying and I got to 12 paradox and it took off a big chunk of health. But I think you can see that fight gave me so much trouble when I was going through 7.3.6.
and he not only dealt with the safeguard like let's look at how many hits it was under 100 hits which if you think about it if you're only relying on physical damage then you know safeguard is always going to be over 100 hits but we were able to do mostly poison damage and get around it also having that incredible block now in this final fight, we're going to be taking a look at Nebula, who as you probably know is poison immune and shock immune. So we're going to finally be able to activate the ruptures. The ruptures are physical damage, so as long as there is not some kind of physical vulnerability, I mean uh, physical resistance or something like that, you're going to be fine. Now this node is a little bit of a nightmare. Um, it's got the superiority where we are a villain, which is going to help. So we will be getting a few passive furies, but it's got arc overload and it's got missing in action. So there's just going to be a lot of buffs and there's just going to be a lot of miss. So I was wondering what would happen if we go into this fight. We know that we have a DOT source that's going to work against Nebula. And, you know, the miss is just going to mess up the rotation. So what happens to Scorpion if we play a little bit more conservatively? We just kind of parry heavy to get these torments on, you know, deal with the falter there. We get the nice miss there. Uh, we're getting a couple furies on us. Now the falter's on us. The falters are gonna help heal us, but I also wanna point out that the sig ability does allow us to siphon some of the healing as well. The sig ability does two things. It does the siphoning of the healing and it does the unblockable special countering. So now, obviously this didn't start very well, um, but I'm just, kind of in the corner waiting for this falter to end and you know I'm just saying like all right let's keep the camera rolling let's see if we can get out of this so nothing going on there because we didn't have any debuffs on her so that was just like a straight special two but now we have the petrify on whoops I had miss on me um, right now we're siphoning a little bit of the healing as well as getting the willpower healing from the falter debuff and we're gonna see I'm gonna be able to heal pretty much back to full um, even though I'm in a lot of trouble right now, um, waiting for that falter to end, I do take this missing in action node in Alliance War, so I kind of know what I'm looking for, but obviously I didn't play very well here. And finally, I'm like, alright, let's go for this move. We finally get a nice special one intercept, we get a ton of torment, so now we can start building these ruptures and hopefully make our way up to a special two so we can do a lot of damage. Um, again, we're just healing a little bit from willpower we're siphoning some of the healing anytime she gets a regen buff uh yeah i'm just thinking on my feet here i'm like how do, how would scorpion work in like a stressful situation like this reminds me of a war fight a little bit and then finally we get a nice burst right here boom that wasn't so bad that wasn't so bad and again i don't always feel comfortable i've said this a lot but i don't always feel comfortable when it comes to the um special two with the intercept across the screen so what I often do is, you know, the, the just parry, throw a heavy, and um, go into the special two that way. But yeah, I don't really have a game plan here. Notice the siphoning of the healing again, 79 per tick. That's just coming from the SIG ability, and that's going to bring us all the way back to full. So that health steal reminds me a little bit of Dr. Octopus. I'm sure if you tested it on Realm of Legends Wolverine, it would be absolutely insane. But yeah, we've managed to heal back to full. And uh, what is gonna be interesting is looking at the stats at the end of this one, because we're gonna see that I do a little bit less poison damage. And of course I took a heavy attack, otherwise we would have finished with a full yellow bar. Um, but let's look at these stats because it's important to know when you play him in an unideal manner you're still doing most of your damage from the debuff the ruptures which is that question mark were 53 percent now when i played him at his max like very skilled it was 64 percent usually so this just means you know if you play him in a style where you're not going to like nail every special intercept or you're not going to play him perfectly you can still do plenty of that red damage and she's going to go down relatively quickly so anyway, this was my showcase on Scorpion. I tried to pick some fights that were realistic, that showed a little bit of utility, that showed his damage. I'd love to know what you think. I personally really, really want this guy on my roster. I think he ticks a lot of boxes that you want in the science class. 
He may not be a war champion on attack. I think he takes a little bit too much finesse to be worrying about that in war. However, I do think he's going to be a great member of some synergy teams. He's got some good synergies with Spider-Man 2099 and Venom, as well as Agent Venom, who is one of my favorite characters from the comics. So I do want to test that one out a little bit. But that's going to do it for today. Let me know what you think, and I will catch you in the next one.